Hi, I'm Rob. Uh, I'm glad I wrote that because I would have forgot to say that. Um, I am Rob. And here are some photos. Um, I don't know who this kid is, but I don't know, Google. And that would be weird, right? If it wasn't me, it was some random kid up there. That would be really strange. No, that's actually me. That's actually me, a little kid um, growing up. Um, that's my sister there. Um, I am half a Cuban, half Puerto Rican. I grew up in the States. Um, I think it's this button. No, which button is it? The next one. Yeah, all right. That's the States. Ah, I have a little button there I can push. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Can I, I can do it with laser? Yeah. I don't know. Can we, I'll do it again? This you have to do with the mouse. Is there some sound there? Or? Yeah, it's a sound. Oh, okay. It's very important sound. Can you do it? Oh, we don't have speakers. No, we don't have speakers. No, we have speakers, but just from the laptop. Just, it would work. Oh. All right. So the sound would have been uh, eagles screeching because of America. Then you guys would love it. But uh, you just got to imagine the eagles screeching in your head, okay? America. So yeah, that's where I was from. Uh, that's where I was born. Um, I grew up in the South. So if you don't know, South is that part of the U.S. Um, I grew up in Georgia. I grew up in Louisiana. I grew up in Texas. And I spent a lot of time in Texas um, until I moved here. Um, my father was in the Army, so that's why I moved around quite a bit. Uh, we were always going to like Army base to Army base. It was really difficult to like uh, keep friends. You know, back in the 80s, it was like we didn't have... Facebook or MySpace. So once you left the city, you were like, okay, see you never again. Bye. And never saw my friends again. So it was kind of difficult. I always had to like readapt to where I went. And um, yeah, I don't know. Some of you might already also have that story of like moving around with gone or alone healing. Uh, so yeah, America, that was, that was there. Still there actually. Um, all right. Next one. Question. <laughs> <laughs> The Eagle Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> growing up in the US and moving around a lot, I didn't have a lot of friends, obviously. So I always had uh, comics and cartoons with me and they always traveled with me everywhere I went. So I actually learned how to draw and taught, taught myself to draw by like buying Spider Man comics. And I would redraw Spider Man over and over again and I would make my own characters and these poses and stuff. This is like what I grew up on, basically. Transformers obviously really influences the, the art that I do now. And uh, Ghostbusters. I'm still big into Ghostbusters. I don't know why. I still I can't shake that off. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like ghosts, I guess. Um, so this is what I kind of grew up on. And this kind of really influenced all my art. From from then on, I was like, if I could just draw these forever, I'm going to be the happiest person and all that. So and I didn't know what to do with that. Like, I saw the cartoon. I saw comics. And I was like, okay, how do I how do, I do that? I have no idea what to do from there. I'm still trying to figure it out, actually. All right. Next one. All right. So... I moved to Texas 1994 and um, went to high school there, got into like the skateboarding scene and all this stuff. I didn't really have a place, so I just had my skater friends. And then as I got older, back, you know, back in uh, about 20, 2006, at this time, I was really going to a lot of comic book conventions. I was like really big into comics. I was, I even wrote my own comic. Um, I had a comic called Dead Beat Hero, which was a comic about a skateboarding superhero who uh, he didn't like his dad because his dad was like a superhero and never had time for him and stuff. So, and he, but he also had superpowers. So that was this, I wrote this comic and I joined this little comic group in Texas called Fun Core Comics. And we would go to like different comic conventions all over the US and like present our stuff. And I did this for a couple of years. I wasn't drawing it. At that time, I wasn't really confident in my drawing style. So I was writing it. And I was not a good writer, oh. <laughs> but I didn't did it. I was like, I just want to do this and it didn't matter. You can set up a booth anywhere and try to sell whatever you want. So that's, that's America. All right. So it's all great. So, um, because of that, I met this guy named Jim Bafood, who's a really famous comic book artist. And, um, after one of the conventions, him and this guy, um, uh, I uh, can't remember his name at the moment, but, uh, they both did the show after an after show at a bar. And they all just hung out. They had a DJ playing and they had uh, mat boards and like cardboards on the wall and they were just drawing and like drawing really fast and they were just like throwing it down. And it was like 
art is a performance and it just blew me away i was like what the hell are they doing and they were like auctioning off the pieces while they're doing it they're like oh you want this okay twenty dollars twenty dollars whatever and after that that was in 2005 when i saw that i went home and i was like i we need to do this in san antonio so we're from san antonio texas i need to do this like i need to get my friends together let's just draw and have a dj and have fun and that's where art slam came it was the whole concept of it was just let me get some friends together. Let's paint. Have a DJ. People can pay and come watch us paint, and then maybe they'll buy some art, right? And so I started in January 2006 in this little bar, um, a decommissioned bar. It wasn't even like an active bar. It's like somebody knew this this kind of hole in the wall place, and they had a little stage. I had a DJ, and we just started like doing the same thing. The same thing I saw. We had cardboard on the wall. We were just drawing whatever stupid stuff. We had a DJ playing. We were ripping it up and we were collaborating on each other's stuff, throwing it on the on stage and people would just buy it from us. And I think there was like six people there. I think it was five artists. So, and the five artists are just friends of mine that I knew who drew a little bit. They weren't even like, like people who were doing it actively. So like, let's just try this out. But since that day in January, 2006, I did it every two months for almost eight years. I did it every two months and it got to the point the first, after the first year I decided I was going to do, um, like theme shows like after the first year i was like let's try to do some like pirate shows let's do like star wars shows let's do like when people come they knew exactly what they're gonna get and it got pretty big out your wall after i think the third year and here's a short uh video i could play this right yes but there's no sound oh sh oh yeah don't, you don't need sound you know it's just a, just an eagle screeching the whole time <laughs> <laughs> Right. So yeah, this is the, uh, I'll just talk over it. This is just a kind of video montage of what we were doing. Um, and it was such a great community in San Antonio because there was nothing else happening there. These were like a time, there's a time where artists were like, how do I make money with this? How can I like go out and show people my art without being in a gallery? And so this was the time. And so I would fly in like these people were from California. This is Skinner. I would fly them in just for the weekend, just to paint with us. And like all the artists were like, what the hell's going on? This is so great. These are people I look up to. Now I'm standing next to them on painting. And it was such a great time. Um, this is also, this is Dave Clawson. This is Jim Afood, who I invited for a five-year anniversary because he was the one who inspired me. Um, we also had like DJs out on the patio. On the inside, we had bands playing and we'd have like three bands a night. So people would sometimes just come for the music. Hey, that's a young me. Um, We'd have like people would come for the music and they would stay for the art, which was great. Uh, or people would come for the art and stay for the music. It's also great. That's a Star Wars theme one. Um, it was always such a good time. Yeah. And it's I always look back on this and fond memories because it was uh, it was just really special for San Antonio. <laughs> and I thought like, what, where does this go? How, what can I do with it? We didn't have any funding. I was working at UPS full time, you know, time delivering packages during the day. And at night, I would like kind of come up with the concept and do this, all the all the ideas for the shows. And um, I was using my own money to do these shows. And the good thing is that the, the community really backed it. So they would pay money to come see us paint, which is great. And then they would come and buy art there. So it was it blew me away. People would pay like five dollars, sometimes ten if we had like special guests. And they would come and they would have music, DJs, and just all kinds of art everywhere. So. It was a really fun time. Um, so yeah, we did that for quite a while. And after I said, after the fifth year, I started to invite more artists in. And okay, that's going to be good. There we go. So I started to invite more artists in. And this is also me with some of the crew. This is Jim Afood, the one I was talking about, who inspired me to do the show. And Dave Carlson was also there. And this is uh, another guy that I was working with who was, I needed someone who would just do the music part because I was, I didn't really know the art community so well until I got started doing this and all the art community started to come to me, basically. And the de and the music community, I had no idea. And that's where um, uh, Scuba Steve, this is what we call him, Scuba Steve, like he was a DJ and he was able to bring like all the DJs and bands in. And um, yeah, as you can see, like I was, there, I flew in Buff Monster, the more Supreme Nitros. Uh, this is in 2013 when I flew them in. Um, and this is always just fun time. This is the first time I actually met Nitros. I didn't even know who he was before then. I wasn't in the graffiti scene or street art scene at all. I only became interested in it because of uh, of going to comic book conventions, actually. Because at this time in 2000, 
you know, six or so, when I would go to a comic book convention, there was all these like vinyl uh, collector's toys. You've probably seen them. And they were made by like different like um, graffiti artists and street artists. And I didn't know that stuff before, but I loved the toys and I was collecting them. And that's how, that was my first introduction to it. So Buff Monster was like one of the main guys that I knew who was making these like uh, collectible vinyl toys. And I was like, so into his artwork and also the more Supreme with his, uh, his own stuff. And I invited them both to come down and like, Hey, uh, I asked if there was anybody else they wanted to bring down. I could fly in like three people. And they said, Oh, there's this guy Nichos in Austria. Uh, we really like his work and we worked with him once. Can you fly him in? And I was like, dude, Austria is far, man. It's like going to be a really expensive ticket. I didn't have any funding, but luckily I worked with, uh, uh, this guy Jasper from, um, Powwow in Hawaii. You guys know Powwow? It's a big Hawaii, um, uh, street art yeah. Yeah. festival that they have there. And Powwow was just starting out actually. And I was able to connect with him because he was already flying Nitros to Hawaii that year back in 2013. So I connected with him and I said, Hey, I will pay for half of the ticket. And I'll fly into Texas and then you fly in the rest of the way. And we did that. And that's how I was able to get Nitros to Texas. And um, he actually arrived before um, Buff Monster, Lamore Supreme. So I had some time to hang out with him and get to know him a little bit. And um, because of that, that's basically why how I ended up here in Vienna. So you can blame him. All right. So this is where everything kind of changed for me. After the last show with Nichos, um, I just put this quote up there because I thought this is something I always thought about. It's, it's never too late to become what you could have been. Um, in 2014, I was 34 and uh, I went through a divorce. Anybody here been through a divorce? It sucks. Uh, 2014, I didn't really know what to do after that because like I was in San Antonio and I was kind of known in the city already and uh, I couldn't really, after the divorce, I was like, fuck, I don't want to be here anymore. You know, can I say? That's it. Absolutely. I get it. Um, I don't want to be here anymore. So um, I decided at that point, like, okay, now it's my time. I'm just going to follow my own creative path. I don't want to be working for UPS and doing these big shows for other artists who I admire, but like now it's time for me to try to shine a little bit. So I wanted to see what I could do. So that's why I decided to move to Europe. And of course the only person I knew in Europe is Nitro. So I came to Vienna and, uh, and he was nice enough to kind of just let me help out. He was nice enough to let me help out like in his, uh, in his gallery for about a year and a half. I was helping him out there. And when I say helping out, I was basically just hanging out in his studio for hours on end, just drawing in my sketchbook. And they just, and he just let me sit there and that was great. And, um, because of that, I started to be that Vienna was such a great place for street art, you know, and like, it's something I always wanted to do. And I've done it once or twice before in Texas, but in Texas, it's really difficult to do it because you have to be invited to paint. Like some, like there'll be graffiti artists who's like, um, I have this wall and, uh, he would just invite the graffiti artists to paint. And if you weren't a graffiti artist or a street artist, you wouldn't really get invited unless you used to like, so. I only had done it twice before, and when I saw the walls here, I was like, okay, I'm going to try this out, but not right away. I started, um, when I moved here in 2014, I started painting um, on the canal about 2016, actually. And I kind of went at it, and I didn't know uh, what I was doing at first. I just kind of like, I had uh, my name, I just called myself Debbie Hero, which is like a horrible graffiti name, there's like too many letters. <laughs> and I wasn't doing graffiti anyway, but it was just like, I just kind of went after it. I was like, I want to keep this, uh, this Debbie hero name because this is kind of like my entry into my, my art, uh, creative side. So I kept that name and I just started going to the canal painting. And then from going to the canal, I, uh, I started meeting other graffiti artists. Um, so i started meeting graffiti artists period. And then they were like, oh, you can do characters. Just do a character here in between us. So we're cool. So I was just like the character. Person, I was gonna say another one. I was a character person, so I would just like they would invite me over, and I would just do a character, and then I would always do these robots, which are like uh, these guys. I call them Austrian nuts, and they're basically um, I kind of created them subconsciously, like to kind of represent my culture shock when I moved to Vienna, because I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I moved here. You guys have a different language, a different money, <laughs> different temperament, like everything was different. I was I was totally shocked, but I didn't realize it until a couple of years later. And I felt like this character. I felt like just like I was inside of this robot and the robot's like just going. I'm just here, I was watching everything, you know? 
And that's where the Austrian arts came from. And I started to draw, paint them everywhere, um, all over. But at the time, I didn't know why I was painting them. But looking back, that's that's the story I to them. Uh, here's some other stuff. Uh, I started to paint these, uh, what I call beat bots, which is what I made the t-shirts from, uh, one of the characters on the t-shirt, uh, beat bots are kind of, because I love doing the astronauts and doing robots so much, I wanted to make like a character that was, uh, that I could do more impressions and kind of just, I love, always loved helmets and transformers, obviously. So I just wanted to do different. I didn't want to always do this kind of bubble character. So the, the, the astronauts turned into the beat bots and, uh, I started to do like just the helmets cause I just really love doing the helmets. And then I also started to play around more like the last few years with letters and stuff. I don't call myself really a graffiti artist, but I love combining the characters and letters in my own style. And um, I also do these characters called Sweater Men. And this one is one I did last year uh, with my wife, who's also doing uh, street art. She's a graphic designer. Her name is Rapunza. And, we, you know, together we just, we went to New York and we were invited to paint the wall and we painted this wall together. She does the, uh, the geometric forms because she's a graphic designer. And I did these uh, ugly ass of sweater men looking on their phones. And, uh, but I like these characters. I don't know why. These are some of the first characters I was drawing when I came to Europe as a kid. Um, yeah, and so that's just the whole other story on the sweater man. Soon, um, yeah. So like I was talking about my wife, for Ponza. Um, in 2019, at this point, we have been, I met her shortly after music Vienna, yeah, and uh, in 2019, we decided to open a studio together, and uh, with the with the point of like, we want a place where we can like host events and also do our work. You know, um, my wife comes from from the background. She was doing um, also workshops for refugees. She started her own uh, farine, some kind of a foundation to do that, and that's how we met. And uh, we thought, okay, if we have a space, we could do these workshops here. We could do uh, group shows and all that stuff. And that's what we did. Um, that's the, the, that's our space. Uh, that's me. Like, I don't know. I'm looking at something there. And uh, we also made like a little shop. So we had like the main uh, gallery area, which is about, mm, that's, it's about 40 square meters, uh, the gallery area. And then we had another 20 square meters, another room. And we made that into like a little shop that we were selling um, stuff from local artists. So it was like a co-sign basically. Um, so they, the artists would just drop out their stuff and we sold something, we would just give them the money. We'd take like a small percentage. We didn't sell it. It was just hanging there. So we had that uh, up for a while. It was really great. We did, our first show was uh, a Halloween show we called it the Art Show. And so we invited, I think, 16 artists, um, not particularly street artists or anything, but just artists that were interested in the whole thing fall out. And we said, we're doing this horror show. If you have any horror related, you know, stuff you want to put up, then we'll do that. And I did that mainly for me because I love Halloween so much and they don't do Halloween so much here at Vienna. So I wanted to have a Halloween show. I was like, you have to come dressed up. So everybody came dressed up and it was really fun. Um, after that, we did, um, the 2020 show and that's what is kind of hanging behind me here. All the artists had to do their pieces on 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter pieces. And we just hung them around the, the gallery. And that was a fun show. And unfortunately, the last show that we did, because if you don't know, 2020, what the hell? Um, and that's after 2020, we kind of stopped doing uh, exhibitions. And we, we closed the shop and that became uh, the podcast room. <laughs> and we still have the space. Uh, we still think about doing an exhibition in the future, but right now we're just kind of working there and just hanging out there. I have a motorcycle parked in there because I want to park on the street. And uh, we, in the future, we might do something. But till then, after after everything closed down, I decided to start this podcast. Um, has anybody here heard any episodes of the podcast? You guys have? Anybody else? Cool. It's all right. I didn't really promote it super well. <laughs> And it, like I said, we started in 2020. If you have a chance, you could listen to it. It's on Spotify, it's on Google Play, it's online. Um, you can see all the, and we don't have so many episodes, but about two years worth. Anyway, um, Creatives 2020, and I did this basically out of boredom in the beginning. And also I wanted to hang out with some of the, the artists in the scene. And kind of looking back of like, how I did it with the with the group shows and the student art studio and also with the art slams, it was all about bringing the community together. And I just wanted to be part of like some kind of community. It was just it's kind of art as an outsider coming in, you know, 
to get into a community that you weren't initially part of. So I thought, okay, maybe with a podcast, I can sit down and talk to artists one-on-one and get to know what we have in common. And also people listening, they can get in, co- they can find out what they have in common with these other artists without actually talking to them, which is like great for Austria. <laughs> so, and it, sometimes you go to an exhibition and you talk to somebody for like 10 minutes and you never see that person again until the next uh, exhibition, right? And I thought in this way, you can just listen for like, I don't know, an hour, two hours, sometimes four hours to somebody if you're really interested and uh, get to know that artist without even have to look into their eyeballs. So that's pretty good. So these are some of the uh, people I had invited initially. I started with some, I started with Fex, which uh, he became a pretty good friend of mine uh, right off the bat. Um, also loves to travel to the U.S. and like a graffiti legend in uh, in Austria, part of the Lord's Crew. And yeah, he's. I just I want to sit down with him anyway. And I was like, here's the time to do it. Let's just sit down. Let's talk open ended, like you know Joe Rogan style. Let's just sit down. There's no. Let's just talk like a conversation, see how long it goes. And I'll just like edit out the bullshit, you know, the bull crap at the end and just keep going. So I did it with him. It was really great. We uh, sat down. I don't remember how long it was, but it was a, a nice conversation. We came even closer after that and uh, find out what we had really had in common. Um, then we had David Leitner, Miguel Hacker. Yeah, I, I spoke with uh, Improper Walls, which is like an all grow through um, a gallery in Vienna. And I, I didn't really want to specifically just talk to street artists and graffiti artists, but just creatives in Vienna, like people who are doing stuff, people that are, you know, in the scene and doing things. So also Shu, another legend. And then I, I, one that kind of stood out to me was um, uh, Nicholas Flatza, because he had started uh, a gallery here, um, which is pretty, uh, it's called Inoperable. I don't know if you guys heard of Inoperable. But he had moved, he had lived here for about 10 years, and then he moved back to the States. And I never knew him when he lived here, but I went to an opera bowl when he had a bus show here in Vienna. And um, I, I just called him on the phone, and I, was, I think, first I texted him, I just didn't call him out of the blue, like, hey, and I, I first I messaged him, I said, hey, I want to have you on the podcast, because he had such a unique perspective, I guess a, a close perspective than I, but he could kind of see the scene from the outside in different ways, so... That was a really interesting talk. And of course, Nitros. Um, if you like uh, Nitros, you're going to love a four hour conversation with Nitros. So you might want to go on the podcast and listen to that. And that was actually edited down from six hours. So that was fun to edit uh, <laughs> twice. Um, and then, of course, you have Scandal, who also has his own uh, space here uh, called Boutique Romana. I don't know. Some other guests, you might know some of these names. And out of all these people that I spoke to, you know, I really connected with every, every, you can connect with anybody when you have a long conversation, you're just sitting in a room, talking to them, having some drinks. There's always some level where you connect, right? And I always found that super, super interesting. And I mean, through all these people I spoke to, I think Golov and I became like best friends. I don't know if you, if you know Golov, you could check him out on, uh, on Instagram. He's having really huge murals here in Vienna and all over, all over the place. Like we're super good buddies now. And, uh, also Luna, who's from Croatia um talking all the time and like i can i feel like i've connected so well with all these uh artists that came down and sat with me and bull, bullshit but well um also i can't talk about the art um uh, the arcade without talking about our uh nino verona who did all the visuals for us uh for us i mean just me but uh we decided to like to try to have like kind of like a way to see the show without seeing it we didn't do it in video again i'm funding everything myself and editing everything myself and he did all the uh all the graphics for it and we thought okay arcade does the whole thing is about um you know the art game so we thought like okay yeah like these old uh cabinets where you would play the games and so he did he does really great pixel art and he would do like different stuff for everyone so we would have like the guest so this is dj fact and that's me you know sitting there and that's my dog chancho and then he would put like stickers from like the scene kind of like you know i had like uh one of my astronaut heads and i had obey they have flying fortress and invader and then start to progress every time it went higher and he would always like do another pixel piece of um stuff that we talked about in the podcast so you would see this you're like what does this have to do with anything and you were listening to the podcast and then you would kind of realize where that went so he would change it up so you see this is that one this is the one with uh improper walls you see now chancho's playing and 
The stickers are changing. This is from the second season. And this is ridiculous. Also, my dog is there thinking about Miami. <laughs> and everything, every, everything here is kind of like just stuff that we were talking about. We talked about koozies, um, which if you don't know, it's like beer coolers, so kind of new beer. We talked about schnitzel and, and, um, he was inoperable. He made like one of the first, um, like street art maps in Vienna that I had ever seen. When I first moved here, somebody just handed me one and I was like, wow, okay. You have it all documented here. Like where you go everywhere. That's awesome. And, uh, I was talking to him about that, how that like really inspired me. Yeah. There is sound. You're lying. <laughs> my favorite. This is my ending music. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was fun. I'm still like not sure where this is going actually. Cause I kind of, I hadn't done the podcast in a while. I was kind of focusing on other projects, but also we, we weren't funded and I felt bad. Like every time I had to call up Dino, He's living in Barcelona now. And if I did another show, I'd be like another episode. I'd be like, hey, can you animate it or can you pixelize all this stuff? But I didn't have any money to give them, you know? So it's like, I got to a point where I was like, I want to stop bothering you with this. And um, so the goal was kind of to try to get uh, funding from it. Just some, something that we can like pay. We can get money monthly that I can kind of give to Nino so he can make the graphics and also kind of pay me for my time for like editing everything and doing all stuff. Um, but I'm not good at funding. I've never been good at funding. So I always do things out of passion without like an idea of where it's going to go. And um, so this is why it's just kind of to be continued. I'm not really sure. I would love to continue to do this the podcast, but um, so then we're kind of uh, waiting to see if, because uh, there's so many more people I want to interview and talk to, you know, there's so many more people in the scene. And um, I wanted to get to everyone. I, eventually, I think I will, but uh, till then, we're just kind of. On um, pause, I guess. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, that's a that's mine. This is Nino's. This is the Arcade Podcast, and it's a Soon Art Studio. So you can always see the update there what we're doing, and there's always links there to all that, so stuff you can watch them out and hear me talk for a longer time. We're good. That's the end of that. <laughs>